when one thinks about America, one usually thinks about freedom, opportunity, access, openness. And it is always difficult to uh, view the world and the problems that people face in the world, knowing what they think about America and what they see America to be, uh, to, as a citizen, know that uh, the concepts and the ideas that make this nation work must constantly be protected, constantly defended. and. Only under those kinds of conditions can the best that this country have to offer survive. Democracy is something that must always, always be tended to, because if it's not, it goes away. And one of the great opportunities during the entire run of the Smothers Brothers uh, shows was that that openness was always being protected, no matter what one may have thought. Uh, about some of the ideas expressed, the truth is that by and large they got expressed. And uh, when that was violated, it really had enormous significance. Um, 1968 was a time of great turmoil in this country. And what happened to the Democratic National Convention was to have set the, the, the course for the next 25, next quarter of a century of American history. It, it, it rang the, 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 the death uh, notice, death knoll, for a society that had for a long time fought to be open, to be expressive. The Kennedy years had promised a lot. And here we were now, uh, 1968 Democratic National Convention, troops in the streets, people being denied constitutional process a democratic process in a, in a major political event, one that was at the heart of this nation. And uh, we sought to comment on that. And uh, we sought also to be responsible in our comment, not to inflame, but to expose and to say to the audiences that were listening to the Smothers Brothers show that uh, take a look at our country and, 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 and see what's happening. It's time to protect. It's time to, 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 to roll up your sleeves and and take care of, uh, of making sure that we don't lose our voice and our freedom. For the network to have selected to not put this on the air uh, was a very serious offense. Uh, it wasn't just a matter of being responsible, as they would have you believe. It was censorship. There was a, there was a point of view they did not want the American people to be uh, uh, exposed to or to be, or, 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 for the, or for the idea of those events to be discussed as openly and as fully. It was not to the vested interests of those who controlled uh, the network. It was not to the vested interests of those who sought to control that period in American life. And they put their power to work and onto all kinds of shams uh, that the time had been bought for a very special piece of airing that they made up all kinds of very bizarre excuses and they never ever told the truth. That it was just outright, downright censorship. The next 25 years in this country uh, told the tale. We got Nixon, we got Watergate, we had a very bad time during Carter. Uh, not so much out of corruption but out of a naivete about how this country works. And then came Reagan and Bush and the ensuing events that put America through a very, very tough time. And I think that uh, as insignificant as some historians might deem this comment, for us in the entertainment business it was a warning shot. We were censored on the Smothers Brothers show for showing America doing something that was un-American and it was not acceptable. I think it's extremely dangerous for us to make the assumption that we're ever beyond the point of something like that happening. I think we've got to grow up and we've got to understand that democracy is, with all of its beauty and all of its strength and all of its power, is still very, very delicate and exists on a very thin thread. So that although at one moment 
something seems almost impossible. It is perhaps the very moment when something like that can happen. No, I think, we, I think it can always happen. And I think we have to constantly be vigilant and on guard. You know, my mother used to say when, when she was telling us about her hopes for her children in this difficult America for her black children, that uh, America is a garden and it has a lot of good things in it. But like a garden, it must be tended. If you don't tend it, the weeds will grow and it'll choke off beauty, it'll choke off the good things. And that's what America's about. It's got to be tended all the time. There's going to be somebody somewhere trying to change all that, trying to out of greed and avarice and, 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 and selfishness and a, and, and a hunger for power. We're always going to try to change the rules and we've just got to make sure those rules don't change. But uh, the answer to the question is yes, uh, that could happen again and does happen. Uh, I think that for a long time, secrecy in this country has been a mandate and has been accepted. We said secrecy was important to the national security of this country. Uh, our CIA has to do everything in secrecy. Uh, if certain information is uh, made public, it will endanger uh, people who work at trying to safeguard the freedoms of this country. And many of us find that to be far from acceptable. Uh, I think the idea of secrecy is more a tool in the hands of mischief makers, people who want to do evil, than it is in the hands of those who seek to do good. Uh, you can go through the days of McCarthyism, which was long before the time when the Smothers Brothers were, were on the air, but it, it, it existed. You can go through what happened in Watergate and what happened with trying to keep that secret. Today there are a number of things, what happened at Iran-Contra, what happened here, what happened there. Uh, even now, networks, I sat down recently trying to get an idea aired in the network and what broadcast standards and practices in the legal department put me through was as bad as anything that could have happened in, 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 in a secret society like Germany or a secret society like the Soviet Union uh, in, in, in containing information and making sure that people do not have access. Uh, yes, it can happen. It can always happen. And it's up to us to see to it that it doesn't. I think young people, or people who are not even priv privy to, the, to, to what happened, it's important for them to know uh, that this happened to us. Here was an entertainment format, here was an artistic format, here was a cultural format that sought to satirize and to make comment on events that were happening in the lifetime of the people then. Uh, we had lost the Kennedys. Uh, that very year, we'd lost Bobby Kennedy. We'd lost Martin Luther King. Uh, the country was uh, getting ready to turn around, and nobody knew quite what it was getting ready to turn around to. And in the, and in the face of all of this pain and anguish that had been uh, put upon us, to have a voice somewhere, some voice that you couldn't even identify, the, the network, whoever he or she is, uh, or all of a sudden, no, we can't do that because there is some other voice that says uh, uh, it's not acceptable. That's very that's that's, that's life by secrecy. And uh, it's interesting when I go and I see Malcolm X today. How many people say, "Well, gee, you know, I didn't know this and I didn't know that." And I say, "There was a reason for you not knowing it is because this information was never made available." But in fact, it should have been. I think the whole world might have seen the black cause, the black objectives, the black thrust, and the role Malcolm X played in that quite differently of media and entertainment and, and just life in America had been open to hearing what people were saying. And I tell you, uh, I don't hold this view just from my own opinion. I believe like the American Civil Liberties Union and others have fought tenaciously to defend throughout the years that uh, all people, regardless of whether I accept their point of view or not, should be heard. It's what makes this country rich. It's what makes this country strong. If I know what you're thinking, I can then deal with your soul, your heart, your mind, and your point of view. If I don't know what you're thinking and you don't know what I'm thinking, 
then we're going to be left to extremes, isolation. I don't trust you, you don't trust me. Then it's going to turn into prejudice. Then it's going to be, I don't like your hair. I don't like your eyes. I don't like your religion. And before you know it, there's blood in the streets and there are riots and there are people clubbing one another in the head only because somebody sought not to let other people hear what were in the hearts of their neighbors. I think we should fight for that. And I love the Smothers for doing it. And when I was asked to do this broadcast, it was the first thing that I thought of. Here was another opportunity to uh, serve the idea that an open society is a great society. I knew about it. We had plagued over how to use the footage, how to shape the songs. Uh, I certainly had the right to, uh, to uh, approve of the words that I was going to sing. And we had to frame it carefully so that we weren't fanning the flames of, of, of anger. We wanted to create the arena of discontent with what was going on and to say that it's proper to be, uh, to have this discontent. But uh, uh, when it didn't go on the air, and we were conscious that we were dealing with something that should be, you know, carefully uh, dealt with. Uh, I was called by Tommy Smothers. And I was told that it wasn't going to go on. And he told me of his anguish and his anger and, uh, and that uh, they didn't know quite what they were going to do about it, but they knew that something would have to be done. And there was one thing that we knew. Uh, we couldn't keep it secret, that we would have to take it to the American people, that we'd have to take it to the public and let them know what had happened to us. And to a great extent, that's what we did for the immediate period thereafter. It was perhaps the only question that I was asked by all the press and everyone else. What do you think? What happened and why? Uh, but it was, uh, I must say that uh, we were quite struck uh, by the fact that it happened. Uh, we just never really, we knew it was always possible, but we never expected it to happen, especially after we had done it. If they were going to kill it, they should have killed it before we did it. <clears throat> but after the fact, we just thought there was no way they wouldn't let this on the air. Now when I look at it, of course, so much has happened in the world and with so many other programs on and so many open uh, debate programs and CNN and everybody and getting information, one would look at this and wonder, well, what was all the noise about? But the point is that uh, each period has its own noise. What is it about? And each period has its own kind of censorship. And we just have to stay, stay to the task of making sure uh, we're not censored. Well, I tell you, even that sketch was quite, quite interesting and, and quite an attempt at uh, some higher level. You have to understand that America was still violent in its whole response to the idea of integration. And integration means the mixing of races and the mixing of people and the mixing of religions, the mixing of ideas, integration. And here was this famous show, Bonanza, which couldn't have been more white and more all-American. And here we were, a black, a Jew, a woman, a football player, the Smothers Brothers and all, you know, saying, hey, 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 look at us. You know, here's what Bonanza should be. and. Uh, uh, we opened up the process and uh, a lot of people were angry and a lot of people got off on it. More people got off on it than people were angered by it. But that was the style of the show. It, it dared to be satirical, it dared to comment, it dared to poke fun at our mores, at our morality, at our absence of ethics or our ethics, uh, as the case may be. And uh, it was a great time. I'd rather have had the Smothers Brothers on the air for the length of time we had them saying something than to have had the Smothers Brothers on the air forever saying nothing. Uh, by, that, by that mere fact, they made an enormous contribution because they touched thousands and thousands of minds that I'm sure decided during the period of the Smothers Brothers show that they were not going to take any crap, that they were going to stay to the gun, that, they, that it was the honorable thing to do, the moral thing to do. And, uh, 
uh, I think the Smothers Brothers, with all the difficulty that they experienced, must take great reward in the fact that they, that they were the heroes of the time and uh, are in the minds of many of us still quite heroic. Uh, people have said to me from time to time, gee, the price that you've paid for your point of view, the censorship, or they're not getting a job, or they're not being on air. And I said, uh, don't weep for me, weep for yourself. I knew Martin Luther King, I knew Bobby Kennedy, I knew the best. I sat with them, I dined with them, I partook of their wisdom. They nurtured my life. I go to my grave with that satisfaction. Just another hit record or another night on television saying nothing. How do you equate it? It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't measure up. No, I think being who you are in your heart and soul and staying the course is the most rewarding.